Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video about the Works Library, I'm going to show you how to synchronize process stations. Now, synchronization can be very helpful if you want parts to move together separately or in some type of order that you want to define yourself. To do that, you can use what's called a sync task. So it's very similar to synchronizing robots and using an RSL statement. So in the 3D world, I already have a layout set up, which you can see here. And you can find this layout on our form in case you want to use it. So notice here I have three works process components and I actually named them station one, station two, and station three. Now remember if you want to find the works library components and layouts you can go to the ECAT tab, expand web catalog by type, and scroll down here to what's called works. So at the start of the layout we can see here that there are some feeders that are going to feed parts to a shuttle conveyor and this shuttle conveyor will then feed the parts to the works process stations. So if I run the simulation you can see how it works out. So the boxes move, move, move down the line. So what I want to do is I want to stop all the boxes and then synchronize their movement. So in this case we'll actually synchronize all three boxes so they move together. So I'll reset the simulation and I'll select the first works process station here go to the param tab, general sub tab, and let's set up our tasks. So the first task we need to transfer in a part. So we'll do a transport in and I'll check the any checkbox here to let anything come in. I'll now go ahead and create a sync task which you can see here. So for sync for list of comp names I need to type in the name of the components I want to sync up with the station. So I actually will sync it up with station 2, comma station 3 and the message it has to receive from both of these components has to be unique. So the sync message, let's go and make this move one, two, three, and then create the task. So station two has to send this message to station one, and station three also has to send this message to station one. And after that sync is done, I'll then transfer out the parts, so a transport out task. I'll select the all checkbox to make it simple, and create the task. So if I go to the su task sub tab here and expand the task note, this is the task that this station will execute. So it'll transfer in a part, sync, and then transport them out. So I'll go and copy all these tasks. I'll press Control plus C, close this out, and I'll now add them to the other two stations and just change them a bit. So I selected workstation two here. I'll go to the task sub tab here, open its task note, and let's go ahead and paste in those statements. And I need to modify these just a bit, so I need this station to sync with station 1 and station 3, and it's going to send both of those components this same message. So that's already set up, so let's close this. And I'll do the same for station 3 here. So I'll go back to the task sub tab, expand the task note, paste in those tasks and just tweak it a bit so instead of station 2 we actually do need station 2 and station 1. So now if I close this out and run the simulation, slow it down just a bit, you can see the box has stopped at station 1, it's waiting, station 2 is waiting, station 3 is waiting, and now they move together. Great. So now the processes will just loop back so once again the boxes move together. Let's go ahead and reset the simulation and now let's say I only want to move two of the boxes at a time. So to set that up, I'll go to Workstation 2. And now let's go and create some more tasks. So what I can do here is I can just copy what I've already set up. So I'll go to the Task Subtub, Task Note. And I need to go ahead and transfer in the same stuff. So I'll copy this. And I'll go ahead and leave a comment here just to separate the task. So this line here will not be executed during the simulation. You can just use a hash and I'll transfer in and what I will do is I will change the components that are going to be synced with the station. So instead of station 1 I'll just make it station 3 and that message has to be unique so I'll go and set it to be move 2, 3 and I'll go and copy this as well and now yes of course I need to move all this stuff to station 3 as well so let's close this out select station 3 here go back to the task sub tab click that task note and let's go ahead and paste in. So I'll press Control plus V. And let's change the sync station 3 to be with station 2. So it's not syncing with itself. All right. And let's close this out. So now what we should see first is all three boxes will move together. And then the two boxes at station 2 and 3 will move together. So I'll run the simulation. 
one, two, three, move, great, one, two, three, and only two and three move, great. So let's go and reset the simulation. Now you may have noticed during the simulation that station one was not receiving any more parts and the shuttle conveyor was not moving. So if I actually run the simulation again and show you, so once boxes two and three move, the shuttle conveyor is stopped. That's because it's using a cyclic rule. So I'll go and reset the simulation, select the shuttle conveyor here, and in the param tab I'll go to the routing rule subtab, and you can notice right here it's a cyclic rule. So I'll go and change this first level to be a capacity rule, and I'll click yes to change all the other rules. And now I'll add the three ports that I can route to, so port three, port four, and port five are those. So let's change this list here, so port 3, port 4, and port 5. And what this means is it's going to check is there capacity to move the part to port 3, is there capacity to move to port 4, or is there capacity to move to port 5. So if any one of these are open, it'll just move the part there. So let's click Done, and now if I run the simulation again, you see the three parts, the two parts, and now it should loop back. Yep, there you go. And now let's say you want to move just boxes 1 and 3. So I can set that up. So I'll select Workstation 1 here. And the Param tab, Task Subtab, I'll access that task node again. And I'll go and copy these three tasks here. Leave a comma to separate some white space. Paste in the tasks. And now what I want to do is sync it up with Station 3. So I'll just modify the sync task to only sync with station 3 and I'll make that message unique so I'll write move 1 3 and I'll go and copy these tasks close this out and I'm going to sync with station 3 here so I'll select station 3 go to the param tab task sub tab and click that task note and all we need to do is paste in those tasks that we set up and edit them a bit so here I'm going to sync with station 1 Go ahead and close this out. So now we should see all three boxes move together, boxes two and three move together, then boxes one and three move together. So let's run the simulation. You can show me a line. Yep, they move in line. Now two and three. And now it should be one and three. Yep, there you go. So let's reset the simulation. And now after boxes one and three move out, I want to move box two. So to set that up, let's go and select station two here. And let's go to the task subtab here and open that task note. And now I need to create a sync task with all three stations. So what I'll do is I'll copy this code here and paste it in. And now I need to sync up with the other two stations. So I'll type here station one, comma, station three. And I'll make the message to be move two. So if you don't want to write the task like this using copy and paste, you can still use the GUI and the options in the param tab if you want to. But hopefully you understand this is a clear example of what's going on. So what I do need to do now is set up a sync task as well in station 1 and 3 with this message of move 2. So I'll close this out. Let's go to station 1, the task subtab, task note. And let's go ahead and after the box moves with station 3, let's go ahead and type sync colon, station 2, station 3, colon, and that message of move 2. So since station 2 is using a sync task that references both station 1 and station 3, you have to sync them up together in those tasks. So that's why right here I'm referencing both station 2 and station 3. And you'll see why in a minute. So I'll go ahead and copy this line here, close this out, select station 3 here, Go to the Param tab, Task Subtab, Task Note. And now all we need to do is after it moves out, box one and three, is just copy and that copy and paste that same task that we set up originally. So notice it's already synced with station two. We just need to edit that to be station one here. And now it'll be move two. So if I close this out, we should see all three boxes move together. Then boxes two and three move together. Boxes one and three move together and then box two will follow them out. So if I run the simulation, show me line. Yep, they're in line. Now boxes two and three. All right, it's a pair. 
one and three, and then out goes two. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our community at community.visualcomponents.net, and you can check the forum for a post related to this video. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day.